Open the As the Fukushima disaster deepens three years later into a planet-wide emergency, with massive continuous daily radioactive emissions into the air, ocean, and biosphere. While officials deny the reality and risks, the nuclear industry fights to stop its renaissance from being rolled back in the U.S. and around the world. And citizens begin to understand the California-Fukushima connection. A new documentary from award-winning filmmakers counters nuclear industry lies and cover-ups. It tells the story of Southern California's recent successful campaign to rid itself of one of its nuclear threats. Environmentalists have tried for decades to close San Onofre down, and this morning, word from the Associated Press that Southern California Edison says it will be closing the troubled San Onofre nuclear power plant for good. Ah, thank you. What a day this is. I can't describe the emotions and uh, the relief to know that we're past this huge hurdle. We don't have to worry about 8 million people being exposed to a meltdown because of experimenting with a broken reactor. This has ramifications around the country. This is a seismic event in the nuclear industry. It looks at the people, organizations, strategies, and factors that forced a powerful corporation to bend to the public will. It traces the little-known history of the nuclear-free California movement. We need a mass movement again, like we had in the 70s and the 80s. All the alternative energies are zooming ahead, and the rest of the world has picked up on it, and we don't want to be left behind. In California, you have four reactors, like Fukushima, that are on earthquake faults and that are in the tidal wave zone, two at Diablo Canyon, two at San Onofre, right on the ocean. Those nukes need to be shut down. We can do it. You can do it. A local story with global implications. It documents California's awakening to the deadly risks to human rights, public safety, the economy, and all future generations posed by nuclear technology despite fierce industry attempts at cover-up. There's information that shows that Edison knew that these steam generators were defective before they were installed, and yet they installed them anyways. And in the process, they blew it. They blew it in a big way. They blew it, and the smoking gun is this big hulk of a nuclear power plant down on the beach leaking radioactivity into the community. And yet Edison is insisting on restarting this thing without fixing it first. I finally found my dream location uh, to, re to retire in, gorgeous beaches, great weather, and now in one swoop, San Onofre could just wipe that out. When I asked the sheriff there, if there were to be some, God forbid, some tragedy, you know, how could people get away? She said, the highway, and you can't move on that highway in rush hour. A meltdown will make Southern California a permanent zone where nobody can live. And these are fundamental issues that are being dealt with not only here in Southern California, but are also issues that are being dealt with in reactor communities around the country. The idea that California would be nuclear free, uh, when all we hear is that there's some form of nuclear renaissance going on in the US, would be a massive blow to the nuclear industry, both in the US, but also globally. It's an empowering story of activists, nuclear experts, public officials, whistleblowers, journalists, and extraordinary citizens facing up to the threat of Fukushima fallout while working to prevent potential Fukushima-like catastrophes here at home. It's also the story of the growing solidarity between Japanese and U.S. activists as they unite to challenge the global nuclear establishment. The whole world is watching Fukushima. We need the United Nations at the General Assembly level to take action at Fukushima. The government of Japan cannot do it. The electric power company cannot do it. We need the resources of our species, the best engineers, the best scientists, and all the money in the world to stop this horrible disaster at Fukushima and all the other nuclear plants around the Earth. This transition
to a renewable-based economy must start now. The easy part is over. Keeping track of what's happening uh, with San Onofre and this power plant for the next few years it will be a lot of work. There's no way in the world that we are going to allow this nuclear power plant to become a nuclear waste dump. We, we really need, I think at this point, to focus on Diablo Canyon and let's make California nuclear free. We got the final wake-up call in Fukushima and we need to phase out and shut down the 104 reactors in America. I will put it very bluntly, we need to kill them before they kill us. Shut down the California-Fukushima connection. Go to the Remix button, hit the Remix button, that way you'll have this video. Otherwise, you know, YouTube's just going to control us, guys, and it's, it's really bad.
PG&E is, is making a full frontal assault here around Diablo Canyon because they feel really um, unsure about the future of Diablo in the face of the closing of San Onofre. There's a lot more pressure here now on PG&E to shut down Diablo because of the new information we have about the earthquake fault. Diablo Canyon nuclear reactors, of which there are two, uh, that are 11 miles from where we're sitting right now are holding approximately, well, six plus million pounds of highly radioactive waste that's stored in pools that are four times as densely packed as they were uh, designed for originally at the intersection of at least 13 earthquake faults. And three earthquake faults having recently been discovered, have now been analyzed that they, they converge with the shoreline fault. And these, two, these three faults together, the shoreline, the San Luis Bay fault, and the Los Osos fault, if they happen to have a simultaneous eruption, which probably would happen if there were an earthquake, they would all go. They could create a larger ground motion than the plant is designed for. Fukushima f fell to a one-two punch, tsunami and earthquake. Diablo Canyon is also vulnerable to a one-two punch. The earthquake could take away the normal supply of power. A fire, because that plant doesn't meet fire protection regulations, could do the same damage that the tsunami did at Fukushima. The difference between Diablo Canyon today and Fukushima on March 10, 2011, the day before the accident, is that their luck ran out. Our vulnerabilities at, at Diablo Canyon haven't been exploited, so that's why we, we've not experienced disaster there. We need to take steps to protect Californians from the risk at Diablo Canyon, not put our heads in the sand and pretend that it can't happen here. When it does happen, it won't be an accident. When you allow a plant that's unsafe to continue operating, that's negligence or manslaughter or something like that. That's not an accident. 
It's the same reason that tavern owners can be held responsible for sending a drunk dr out on the roads. The Nuka Regulatory Commission would be responsible for a, new, for a problem at Diablo Canyon when it allows that to plant to run, knowing it doesn't have adequate seismic protection, knowing it doesn't, it's not protected against fire protection regulations. Again, they're gambling with the lives of Californians, and that's not the role they should be playing. What we should do is shut that plant down, both of them, both of those reactors. Now, we shouldn't put up with it. It's wrong, it's illegal, it's immoral, it's, it cannot go on like this if we want to have a future for our children.